Hi, this is Peter Rezicek from ShadowTrader.net, and this is a short video discussing the weighted S&P Advanced Decline Line, which is a new think script that we have on offer at ShadowTrader.net. I'm very excited actually to bring this out. Uh, I've been working on it for a little while with uh, my colleague uh, Dan O'Shee, and we are very excited about the uh, signals uh, that it gives. So let's just give a brief rundown here of what exactly the script does. Obviously, the script uh, in question is this area down here. And what it's doing is it is plotting two different readings of the 11 sectors in the S&P, which would be healthcare, technology, communications, financials, etc. It is plotting them in two different ways. It is plotting them, as you can see here, as a white line. And I'll just make this a little bit bigger so you can see plotting them here as a white line and then also as a histogram. And what this script does is it plots the 11 sectors that make up the S&P in two different manners from the open. And that's very, very important, uh, very similar to these bubbles here that we have on top. This is actually a, a bonus free script that we give out only uh, exclusively to our options advisory subscribers. And what it does is it's reading the 11 sectors of the S&P, whether they are green or red, from the open, which is extremely important if you want to gauge intraday direction and turn turning points, et cetera, properly, because you really want to know what is going on from the open, not from the prior day's close, because things gap overnight and that distorts everything. And it doesn't really give you a good indication of intraday strength or weakness. So again, what the script is doing is it's taking the 11 sectors in the S&P, and plotting them in two different manners. And the first manner is the white line, as you can see here, and that white line is the unweighted line. So basically it's taking all of the 11 sectors in the S&P and it's plotting them from the open in an unweighted manner, meaning that it's giving the same exact amount of weight as it would the, uh, to technology as it would to energy, for instance. And this is um, in, in, important to know because the technology sector, for instance, makes up almost 30% of the S&P, whereas energy is only 2 to 3% of the S&P. So, so this weighted line that's uh, just unweighted, rather, that is just all the sectors um, given an equal weight doesn't really give you a good uh, idea of what the S&P is going to do, because obviously the S&P is going to move more if, for instance, technology and healthcare getting gear because they make up so much more of the S&P than if say real estate or materials or energy or some of these less weighted sectors were to start to move. So the white line is the unweighted version and then the histograms here, um, the purple and yellow, that is the same data but in a weighted manner, meaning that this histogram is plotting those 11 sectors from the open weighted according to their weights in the S&P. So obviously like uh, Infotech technology is about 28%. Uh, you can see some of those weights up here, healthcare 13.4, consumer discretionary 11.9. These are the actual weights. And you can see on down here, utilities only 2.5, energy only 2.4, they have far less. So this histogram is plotting these sectors from the open on a weighted basis. And as the day unfolds, it gives a lot of really, really powerful information in terms of confirmation of when turns are happening and also how much momentum and power there is behind moves. So let's just take this particular day, for example, which is uh, Tuesday, December 14th that I'm looking at. If you recall, the market gapped down pretty firmly and then rallied off the open. Now don't get confused by these candles here because these candles are not price candles of the S&P. These, these candles are the advanced decline line of the 500 stocks in the S&P. So you can see it opened up quite negative at minus 244 and then in the early fade move when the market rallied up to almost fill the gap on this Tuesday, you can see that the advanced decline line went all the way up to 109. So this tells you that at this point, 109 uh, more stocks in the, in the 500 of the S&P were uh, up rather than down. So in looking at this, the best way to compare the data that we see here is if we compare it not necessarily to the advanced decline line itself, but to the price action. So in order to do that, let's just 
pinpoint a couple of interesting areas here in the weighted AD script where things seem to turn. And I've put it on a five minute because I've been studying this for a little while now as we've been developing the script and I've noted that I think the five minute works best rather than a longer time frame in terms of, of giving you some signals. So on the five minute, notice that it's exactly at this point, which is at 10.30 a.m., 10.30 to 10.35 right here, where the weighted and both unweighted line both start to go negative. We call this crossing below the zero line. The white line is, of course, zero. And let's take a quick look at what was price action in the S&P doing at exactly that moment. So now let's make the SPY bigger and let's switch it also to a five minute. And let's move right to that same area of 1030. And let's move, move, move across right here. And there it is. This moment right here, these two bars are 1030 and 1035. And notice what happens after that. We can draw a trend line here. We can connect. And as that AD line, both weighted and unweighted, goes negative, look what happens to price. So you could have actually been short here as it went negative, actually up here, actually, all the way up in, in this bar. And I'll just point an arrow here so you can see it clearly. All the way at this bar here, long before price even came down to the trend line, this is where your AD line went negative. And then we can see what happened after that, and we went much lower, okay? That's example one. Let's look at another example from the, the same day. We'll just keep it to, to this particular day. And I wanna point something else out. Notice what happened here. After that point, and we can obviously see it here, after we broke, we went down quite a bit and we stayed bearish all the way until about here, which is about 1.30 p.m. Notice what the weighted AD line was telling us during that entire time basically was telling us that if you were looking to get a bounce at that time to short, or if you were looking to buy, it wasn't going to work because not only was the line firmly negative, but note that the weighted sectors were driving much lower below the weighted line. This is the weighted line, and look at how low the weighted sectors were going. So in this case, as the market continued to sell off in the morning, the weighted sectors were actually drilling down harder and selling off harder than the unweighted sectors, which obviously has more of an effect on the S&P and keeps it low. And then you can see here, we said, where does that turn happen? I said around 1.30, it wasn't exactly 1.30, maybe a little bit later, but look what happens after that. We go to 2 p.m. and all of a sudden the divergence is not there anymore. Now the weighted sectors and the unweighted sectors are riding right along with price together and obviously moving up closer and closer to, to the zero line. And again, going back to price, we can see what happened around that time if we make this bigger. Here's the change right here at 2 p.m. And notice that that's the exact moment when price really starts to rally off the lows. And again, as a, as a, there's the 2 p.m. right there if we look above. And again, just as a confirmation, I can even draw a trend line here. Notice that you've got trending AD right on up. And again, most importantly, as I was saying, after that moment, there's no more divergence between the weighted and the unweighted, okay? So that's it. I really just want to leave it there. I don't want to get into too many days. This is really something that you have to uh, put on your charts yourself and experiment with it. We're really excited to offer it uh, to everybody. Uh, we feel that it's a really strong addition to what we call the quad. This is, of course, our quad screen, which we've been teaching for almost 15 years now. It's kind of a shadow trader proprietary way of looking at the market. And this is just yet another thing that you can add to the quad to give you that sort of all around picture of what's really happening under the hood as it's happening. It really helps you to make better decisions and keeps you in trades longer and just you know, acts as either confirmation or denial of exactly what's going on, right? There's either going to be convergence or divergence, and that's happening all the time between different internals that you have on your screen. And this is just another internal indicator to have on your screen to accentuate that sort of uh, convergence or divergence and help you make better decisions in the market every day.